tonight I'm going to do some night sky photography that I've never done before. It's either going to be a game changer or a complete bust. So make sure to stick around and find out and roll that intro. G'day you Blade Legends, thank you for joining me for another vlog in the beautiful South Australia. Tonight we've got the best land based view you could possibly imagine of Wilpena Pound. Tonight I'm going to make a game changing image or an absolute stupid idea. We're about to find out two different lenses at two completely different times of night to blend them together to get a ridiculous image of Wilpena Pound that I can only imagine. So let's try and bring it to reality. Make sure to drop below and subscribe because this series is going to be an absolute banger and tonight could be an absolute bust and you want to leave stupid comments about me. But that's fine also. That's what photography is all about. Let's get into this. All right, so just finished last week's vlog, raced up here because I wanted to capture the bit of blue hour that we've still got so I can compose this image. I've got the XF 16-55 on. All I'm worried about is focusing and getting the composition correct. So I can just leave the tripod here right now. So I'm shooting at 33 mil on purpose because I want to talk about that a little bit later in this vlog. And then just basically setting focus in on Wilpena and getting this image right here. So there's nothing special about it. It's just one part of three parts we're gonna have to photograph tonight to get the image that we're either gonna make or break this. So that was just the first thing I was worried about. Now I'm gonna sit down, get some tucker in me, wait for the stars to come out and then we're on to part two. All right, it's all hands on deck for part two and it's gotten so much cold, it's probably about three degrees in the desert after a 32 degree day and to believe it's only about 10.30 at night. So it's extreme conditions in the desert but I absolutely love those harsh environments and that's what brings generally beautiful landscapes. And this one I can't touch, I've left that there, it's in focus, it's in the right focal range. This is the other one I have to set up I'm shooting on the X-T1 and Samyang 12mm for the night sky. So this will only do the night sky, this will only do the foreground in about 50 minutes time. So the next 50 minutes, I'm going to be continuously shooting on this lens, instantly stop, get onto this camera, and hopefully, hopefully, we should have an image after about 50 minutes. So I can't really stuff up any images as of now. So for this X-T1, I'm going to go through and focus to infinity, obviously, because that's where the stars are. 6,400 ISO, 25 seconds. I would love to go that 27 seconds, but I have to do a hand remote, and I want to do 12 images in place to blend them in. But we're going to get onto about 36 images, but I'm going to get on that to a second, just a second. So what I'm doing is basically the Milky Way arch is right in front of me here. You can't see it, obviously, but I can see it with a naked eye. It is that bright out here. So what I'm doing is one safety image. So I'm photographing basically right on the Milky Way's core. I'm going through and getting 12 images there. Then after I have that safety image, let's call it, I'm going across to the right-hand side of the arch, another 12 images with the same settings. Then I'm going back to the left hand side of the arch which is the weakest or dullest part of the arch so what i'm trying to do is get the safety net of the first image that would definitely be in play if i can blend those together to get the second part of the arch that would be even better if i can get all three parts it would be absolutely perfect but i'm putting them in priority basis so first priority as a safety image secondly as hopefully i join together and third, hopefully I get a full arch if I need it. Personally, I only think I'll use the center and the right hand side, just because of the type of photography I'm doing for the foreground. So right now for the next sort of 35 minutes, I'm gonna go through and get 12 images of the center, of the right hand side, of the left hand side, so 36 images in total, so I can blend them together and get a single image of the center a single image of the right hand side and a single image of the left but it's a lot less noise and a lot more detail in the Milky Way. So that's what I'm going to go through and do right now with these settings and the last thing that I have to be very very key point is locking the Kelvin temperature down here to 3800 and also in here. So when I blend those images together we've got the very similar not the same because the lenses will be different a bit as well with the Kelvin temperature of how much noise it brings in and that also with the contrast. But closer we can get them, 
then we can use the raw files in post-production to get the Mickey Mouse. So this is part two, part two A, B and C, so let's say, of getting this who knows what image and hopefully it pays off. Okay, so plenty of time has passed now. 36 images in camera and she's gotten a lot bloody colder in the last half an hour. But what I've been waiting for with this camera is 2308. Because that is when the moon rises. And that is going to change the complexity of this image. It's going to make this lens work so much less harder. And that is what I want from it. So 2.8. It's not meant to be shooting night sky photography. It's not really shooting night sky photography. But what I want to show you now is previously, at about 10 o'clock when I first woke up, I took an image of two minutes and four minutes on this exact same settings. Okay, so two minutes is this one here, and four minutes is this one here. That's with no moon rise. That's still about an hour and a bit before the moon rises. The moon has just freshly risen. It hasn't done its fully glossing up, brightened yet. I've just composed an image and this is it here. And look at the difference the moon is making to this image. It's removing the noise. It's giving me more contrast. That means more color resolution inside of the image. So that is exactly what I wanted. And really, I am really tired right now, but I am actually super pumped with exactly what this image is doing because the night sky it's hard to tell. I haven't blended them together, but so far I've got an image, a safety net image that's gonna be worse, worth the wait. Not worse, worth the wait. And this, what I wanna try and do with this is two stitch pano because this resolution is 26 megapixel and the other one's only 16 megapixel. So three images blended into one pano and then two with this one should work out pretty even to blend them together to make a panoramic image. So with this image, what I want to try and do is basically get one safety net image again at that sort of 33 millimeters and then pull it back to 23 mils. And there's two reasons why I'm going to explain at the end and do a two stitch pattern and see how that goes. But with this one, I only want to do about eight images roughly because I went up for two minute exposures. It's going to be another 40 minutes of photographing basically, so that's a long time to sit around and wait. I have to be up at 5 o'clock to photograph sunrise. So I don't want to spend too long doing this, but I want to make sure it's right in camera. So I'm going to get onto this now, another 40, 45 minutes of photographing. Fun joys of night photography. W-O-W. Wow! Wow! This lens is actually insane. I know there's like a... 72% moon, so might 71% moon tonight. You can see it just right there through the window. And I think I've lost the conditions that I want now because it, this, the moon's risen too much and it's br brightened up too much. When I first got that up, it's like the sun, when it first comes up, it gives that glow to it, gives that nice feel. But now it's just warming the whole scene up and it's got less contrast on it in there. So photography is pretty much done now. I didn't actually take eight images of each one. I took about two or three um, because the moon got so bright in the end, it didn't really need it. But the first one I took probably four to blend together because uh, I just knew I'd be here till like midnight, one o'clock, I have to get up in like three hours, that's not good. So what have I went through and done? 33 mil, I have went through and done a single exposure, this image right here. Also at 33 mil, got two images and done a stitch. So I want to try and blend that together and that will be the image that I definitely want to use if it does turn out okay. And the last image I just took was a 23 mil image and that's when I noticed it was too bright in the image and it didn't even run to a full two minute because the battery ran out and it's still too bright. So that's me sort of done for that photography. If I do any more, it's going to make it way too bright for the Milky Way and look unrealistic because even these ones have probably have to dull down quite a bit. So 23 mil, 33 mil, 6,400 ISO, and then 2.8, and all importantly, locking down that Kelvin temperature to 3,800. And that's why I was standing behind the car here, because I've done so much photography, like 40 images to make this one image work, hopefully. I'm actually shielding with the car. I've moved the car to basically perfectly line it up so I can photograph this side and the wind won't knock the images. Also, I can sit in there because it's bloody freezing out here. So, the moment of truth. 
This is where I get really, really nervous because I'm putting this vlog out there before I can edit this image. This, this image does require a lot of editing. I will be honest with you up front. I have to blend those two images together to make that arch, two images together to make that beautiful foreground, cut the foreground out, put it with a Milky Way image, and hopefully get this resulting image right here. There's a game changer and not a bust. If it's not that great, you can hammer me in the comments. Whatever, hammer me in the comments. I'm fine with that. Here it is, you beautiful people. In four and a half hours, we're gonna be up again, photographing this beautiful scene from down a little bit lower from a creek bed. That image is going to be absolutely rip snorter if we get the conditions that I expect we do tomorrow morning. So make sure to drop below and subscribe for that. But if you wanna learn night photography, landscape photography, get free giveaways monthly, get weekly tips and tricks, make sure to drop below and check out our membership course. It's only $9.99. If you eat Maccas once a month, it's the same price as Maccas, but this is actually educational and will give you something to go forward with your photography, which is really, really important. Or if you want to support this channel, there is also an option to support this channel down there. But guys, let me know in the comments below, please. What did you think of tonight's image? Was it a game changer? It was an absolute bust. What would you have shot? But lastly, that 23 and 33 mil focal range. Why did I shoot there? I really can't get it out of my head, but those prime lenses have just come out. The 23 and 33 mil prime 1.4. I think that'd been absolute spitting perfect lens adaption for this to shoot the night sky photography. If anyone out there has tried those new lenses for, for night sky photography, please in the comments let me know or email me directly. I would love to know about those lenses because I think that'd be perfect for my night sky photography and changing the compositions that I shoot and not always shoot wide angle. But guys, that is me done for today. Make sure to get out there, keep creating, keep inspiring others, and I'll see you in the morning. Ciao.